What's going on there, guys? Good morning, good afternoon to some out there. It is the Earth Master here on the live stream with an update video. I didn't get a chance to get one uh, last night, so I'm going to do one this morning. It is uh, October, or not October yet, September 21st, 2021, about 10.53 a.m. West Coast time here in California. Latest quake on the globe is going to be a 2.7 off the coast of Northern California into the Cascadia subduction zone kind of towards the southern end of that area. This area has seen quite a bit of tremor in the slippage department uh, within the Cascadia range. We'll check that out here in a little bit. Want to get into some activity that's taken place over the last 24 hours, a little bit of earthquake activity ramping up around the uh, Chile area, including a 6.4 earthquake that struck earlier this morning. Uh, this was followed up by a trail of activity stretching towards the uh, uh, towards a little bit shallower surface area up here around the subduction area. 6.4 struck earlier this morning and as I mentioned followed up by a couple shallower earthquakes and migrating away from that 6.4 towards the subduction zone uh, locked area. This, this whole area right here is basically locked but uh, looking at this trail of activity here could indicate uh, potentially something further brewing in this area. So keeping an eye pretty closely on that uh, 6.4 region. Uh, also up here in Northern California, we do have that movement around the Cascadia. A 2.7 striking at 4 kilometers below the surface at the southern end, kind of around the Gorda Escarpment region. Locked section of the Cascadia sits right around this area up here and stretches up north off the coast. Well up here where we've seen another earthquake um, earlier way earlier than this one the 4.3 struck at 23 kilometers kilometers into uh an area where we haven't seen a whole lot of movement recently uh, it is kind of at the northern end of the cascadia once again subduction zone sits kind of just off the coast here and uh, it's kind of in i guess it's considered the uh what do we got up here far as zones go it's not really shown it here on this map but uh, we just we really haven't seen a whole lot of movement here recently in this area. Although looking at historical activity, uh, it does show us that it is possible for um, quite a bit of movement to take place up here in this region. So not abnormal, but we just haven't seen, like I mentioned, a lot of activity there recently. And of course, down here in the southern end of the Cascadia, uh, movement there is pretty uh, rampant over history. But... Cascadia subduction zone is capable of producing over a 9.0 earthquake in this region with a, uh, a full rupture, partial rupture in the southern end could be a uh, mid eight, upper eight magnitude. Uh, and that would do um, quite a bit of damage in itself. So let's hope that uh, doesn't happen. Let's check out the trimmer map real quick and show you guys the movement that's kind of taking place uh, here at the southern end of the Cascadia. You can see this area right here hopefully you guys can't hear that little yapper in the background um there's about uh oh what do we got there about 23 epicenters in the southern end of the cascadia this following a pretty heightened uh, trimmer event that took place uh yesterday well actually the, the this here was on the 19th so about two days ago the movement that i showed you um on the previous map was from uh, yesterday. So two days ago, we had a pretty significant tremor event in the southern end of the Cascadia. Uh, this here, once again, is uh, down dip downstream here where the slippage occurs between the North American and the Juan de Fuca plate as it subducts underneath the North American plate here. And uh, that area has been um, a pretty good hot spot of activity uh, in weeks past and also uh, two days ago where we've seen this uh, pretty significant event happen. And as I mentioned, yesterday's event uh, calmed down a little bit, but there's still about 23 epicenters in this region. I'm guessing today with the activity that we are seeing off the coast of Northern California and along the Cascadia, uh, that it will be picking back up uh, once this map gets updated about 6.30 p.m. Uh, West Coast time here. So we'll see what it does. But uh, yeah, keep an eye on the West Coast region, folks. Uh, we are getting some further movement down south. Uh, including a 2.6 that struck within the last hour right around the San Jacinto Fault area south of Riverside. Of course, this area very active when it comes to micro microquakes. Uh, these, this 2.6 just, just popping up above the 2.5 threshold. 
Um, and uh, pretty typical of earthquake activity down here in this region. I don't see any swarming. Uh, everything looks kind of on an uh, average earthquake day here in California, for the most part down south. We are seeing a little heightened activity once again uh, along the Calaveras Fault System and the Hayward Fault area. Uh, two separate fault systems kind of kind of merged down here a little bit, uh, right around the San Jose area. Seeing a swarm of microquakes up and down that fault area including an earthquake here on the San Andreas Fault once again. Six kilometers northwest of the San Francisco Zoo. Hmm, are they talking about the city or the zoo itself? Who knows? It's pretty crazy down there, let me tell you. This one pretty quiet. I mean, uh, pretty deep. 11 kilometers for that 1.2. Just a microquake, but still some further movement along the um, this area of the San Andreas Fault. Uh, there's that 2.7 up here. And the activity around the geysers, uh, typical. Movement kind of calming down around the Long Valley supervolcano, but we are seeing a return of swarming away from this other swarm area uh, by about five miles or so to the southwest. This is a separate swarm from this region up here, uh, but over the last 24, it looks like things are kind of kicking up down here in this region uh, with some microquakes. And uh, most of these appear to be around five kilometers or so below the surface. Lake Tahoe looks uh, pretty pretty quiet uh, we did see a little movement along the north shore a little very small microquake activity in that region the rest of northern california pretty quiet uh, some query blasts throughout oregon it looks like and uh, volcanoes for the most part in the pacific northwest not showing too much activity here's some movement into the yellowstone area which is still kind of kicking up let's go ahead and check out the yellowstone overviews of the seismographs and we can see some of that activity Still kicking up over the last day, although it looks as though, at least in the northwestern area, things calming down. But I can't be certain here because we're looking at, uh, uh, at least within the last few hours here, an uptick in this station alone. But looking at the activity over here that, that the USGS is kind of marking, things appear to be calming down. But I can say that's kind of why I, look at, I like looking at these seismographs, the raw data, because you can see specifically that the swarm has not completely died down at least in this area quite a bit of earthquake activity here looks like about 30 small earthquakes or more microquake level but still uh, a little swarm going on in the um, mary lake area of yellowstone national park lake yellowstone looks um, pretty quiet for the most part i don't see any significant movement in that area of the world or that area of the park i should say as uh, far as other earthquake activity goes, uh, Texas region, some movement down there around Pecos, Texas as well. We did see some uh, a little 1.1 in the New Madrid area. That should be dropping off the map pretty quickly. Uh, I believe that's a much older earthquake. Uh, there's some movement taking place, ramping up over here along the western part of the Pacific Ring of Fire, including this 6.0. Uh, near the Curl Islands, we kind of talked about that yesterday. That should be dropping off here pretty soon as well. Kind of an older earthquake since then. We've seen a little bit of movement uh, take place following that, but nothing significant in the Japan area. Stretching down through the Philippines, we have seen an increase in activity, including 5.0. Pretty deep movement south of here as well. Um, looks like 35, 50 kilometers or so for most of these earthquakes. Uh, also a little 4.6 near the Papua New Guinea region. New Zealand looking pretty quiet, at least according to the USGS map. We did see some movement on the um, Peru, Chile, or not Peru, no, Kermadec Trench area, Tonga Trench up here to the north. But this earthquake right here, pretty deep into the Kermadec Trench area, 5.2 at almost 400 kilometers into the subduction zone. Really deep activity in that region. We see a lot of deep movement up here north, uh, but we need to be on guard when we start seeing it move down here as well. Uh, there is the 6.4 that struck South Sandwich Islands. Not really showing too much activity. This here is an older quake from yesterday, 5.4. Uh, we did see some further movement ramping up here in Turkey within the last um, couple hours or so, including that 4.3 in Turkey and also the 4.0 earlier this morning in the Albania area. So I'm just kind of watching some movement around the globe. Pretty active, folks. West Coast kind of lighten up. Just need to be on guard, especially with the uh, uh, movement along the Cascadia subduction zone. We'll cover a little bit more activity on solar weather and uh, the volcano activity around the Canary Islands in an update video later this evening, folks. But for now, 
Have a good day. Stay safe out there. Be prepared. A lot going on in this world. A whole lot going on in this world. We'll chat you guys a little bit later. Stay safe.